Let's face it, many new tabletop RPG systems have been popping up left and right over the last couple of years. And it only happens now and then that one of those RPG systems, either based on 5th edition, either based on uh, a decipher system, either completely new, actually clicks with me. But it was when I first looked into Nimble RPG or Nimble 5e that I saw a new system that really clicks with me and that I might end up using at my table. Nimble RPG takes the rules of 5th edition, uh, it feels really really familiar to 5th edition, but it completely simplifies everything. But a lot of our RPG systems have been doing that lately, but what Nimble does is they actually add mechanics that are really, really exciting and make the game flow much more. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Trask and this is Nimble 5e, a fast tactical tabletop RPG. Uh, based on 5th edition as you can see because it's called Nimble 5e and it has reached 134,000 US dollars out of the 5,000 US dollars goal with 2,155 backers and most importantly 20 freaking days left, right? So uh, Nimble 5e is coming to a table near you. Now I want to talk about the preview PDF that they offer on this backer kit page for free. You can download it for yourself, link in the description below. And I want to talk about that really quickly because there's a few things in there that I find super interesting. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. The first time I read some of those things I wasn't sure about it I wasn't I was like eh, I don't know if this would work for my group but the more that I read into it is this is really cool again this is for a certain type of people uh, there's people out there that just want 5e that just want like I don't know Pathfinder I want to get like super deep into that it's not per se for those people but it's also not for people who want to play like a super simple RPG and just want to take all of the player agency away Nimble 5e sits perfectly in the middle uh, and uh, it's Clearly, some people ag agree with me, right? Um, now, something that I want to start with. So, I want to uh, talk about the Kickstarter page before I look into PDF. But something that I want to uh, really start with is the pledge levels. Now, let me just quickly check my camera if you can still see this. Yeah, so there is this um, pledge um, level kind of thing. And they're doing something really, really, really smartly with their prices. Something that I haven't seen a lot of people do in the past. And I think it is just, uh, I think this is one of the reasons why it's doing so well, uh, personally. So they have an all in premium box set for $95, all three books in a beautiful hardcover format. So $95 for a sleeved box set, uh, is, Oh, it's a good price, right? It is a good price. But $95, on the other hand, is also a lot of money to invest if you um, just bought, I don't know, a new pair of sneakers or whatever. You might not want to invest that $95 into the game right now. $95 is a lot of money, but it is a good price, right? So there's um, Core Rules Hardcover, Heroes Hardcover, Adventure Hardcover, all comes with the PDF, 70-plus uh, spell cards, magical item cards, beautiful storage box for panel A5 size car stock jam screen all of that stuff right uh, and all unlocked stretch goals of course but what they do then is really smart they also offer uh for 39 i don't know where they get this pricing they um i don't know how they're doing it uh but they're doing it 39 us dollars for the soft cover books um comes with three soft cover books and the PDFs, and then a bunch of like um, printable stuff that you get, right? Now, 40 bucks for that is a really good price, but also what I think is really smart is they offer the hardcover and the softcover of the same book, meaning that people wanna want that hardcover to sit on their shelf or whatever, they can really get that hardcover and it looks cool. But people who want the game, but don't really like care about hardcovers and, and the sleeve and all that stuff, they can get the soft covers. And I personally am a big fan of soft covers. And I think this is so smartly done. Um, now the PDFs alone will set you back $25. There is a box set with extra soft covers, uh, which you can get like the box set and then the soft covers for 134 and then there's more there's more options i don't i i don't generally talk about like the higher end options but just now that we're here uh one for me one for you for 190 you can get yourself two of these box sets um which is a little bit cheaper than just buying 
one or like buying two separately or whatever. Now, what is Nimble RPG? In a nutshell, Nimble RPG, I'm saying Nimble RPG, but it's actually Nimble 5e. Uh, Nimble 5e is what they say, a fast tactical tabletop RPG. Now, I want to look at the free PDF um, in a bit, but... Uh, they now have unlocked like a bunch of stretch goals, just a little bit more. Uh, and they will have Foundry Virtual Tabletop Support, which would be really, really big for this thing. Because that was where, where it's all at. So it's a fast 5e compatible tabletop RPG. Your game nights are too precious to waste with slow and fiddly rules. Slay the slog using the best elements from the greatest RPGs around. Um, so it is a really cool system that indeed borrows from different RPGs. It feels really 5e, but it also uses a action point system uh, like, for example, um, DC20. It really feels DC20 in that department, which I like because that is one of the main reasons that I like DC20. So there's core rules and one of the example rules is and the first time i read this i was like eh? and then i read it two more times and i was like actually it's really cool your hero's attacks just hit don't waste your time rolling to see if you can deal damage just roll your damage dice you deal that much damage there, if you have a short sword, for example, I'm just saying something. You have a short sword, a d6, you roll, you, ju you just say, I use an action to hit that creature. You hit that creature and you roll that d6. That's what you do. That's the damage. Now, if you would roll a 1 on that d6, the attack misses. But, and this is a really cool crit rule. I love this crit rule and I'm going to actually use it in my games from now on. Um, if you roll the max on your uh, die... Um, let's say you roll a 6 on a d6 for your short sword, right? You can roll again, and you add that to the damage. If you then roll another 6, you can roll again, and you add that to the damage. If you then roll another 6, you can do that again, you can do that again, you can do that again, until eternity or until your luck runs out, right? So, the cool thing is, with a short sword, and this is what I first did it at first didn't click with me, but now it kind of does, with a short sword, your chances of missing are pretty high it's one out of six but your chances of critting is also one out of six with a weapon that deals 1d12 damage it is of course different but uh the game kind of um uh changes some stuff around in order for you to kind of like balance that out but that's like like more in-depth uh information that i want to look at in like a separate video i want to i really want to like review this thing when it's done um so yeah that's exploding critical hits uh there's a, uh, an action point system all that stuff i will talk about that in a bit for the preview pdf um and there is of course like uh, elements from d they call it they talk about elements from from D&D and Pathfinder. And for me, there's also like DC20 in there. There is some Shadow Dark stuff in there. Um, and they just make a really one half-page character sheet. A really simplified uh, simplified sheet. More focused. So each choice matters far more. Uh, so yeah, it is um, it's compatible with all of your existing 5e adventure modules. Monster books and supplements. They talk about how you can take a stat lock from 5e. A uh, monster set block and just use that for nimble. Um, yeah, it is. I don't know. They have 11 flavorful and customizable new class, new classes and 20 new uh, 22 uh, subclasses. So they have a berserker, a commander, the cheat, which is basically the rogue, a mage, a oath sworn, a shadow mancer, hunter, shepherd, which is really cool, uh, storm shifter, um, swift, and song weaver. I really like that they didn't go with like the generic names for this. Although they all resemble something that we know. I mean, a berserker is a barbarian. The commanders could be like fighter type more. The cheat is a rogue. The mage is a wizard or, or whatever. Uh, the oath sworn is um, uh, one of those. I don't know. It could be a paladin, but it could also be a warlock. Uh, yeah. So in that sense, I think Nimble RPG, and there is at least 2,155 people that agree with me, Nimble RPG is really worth looking into. Now, if you want more information, on this they have a really good trailer i'm not gonna play that right now but their trailer is absolutely fantastic and explains nimble rpg far better than i possibly can let's take a look at the preview pdf and this is the free preview pdf you can download for yourself link in the description below to the packer kit page now what is nimble 5e to me how i perceive it is they took a bunch of like 
the, all of the simple rules from different RPGs. Now, I'm not saying they took those rules uh, and, and, and took them from those RPGs in particular, but the way I'm perceiving it as a consumer, I see a lot of uh, 5th edition, I see a lot of DC20, I see a lot of Pathfinder, I even recognize some Shadow Dark in here for some reason. Um, and that is what I think is really cool about it. So uh, it uses, uh, it focuses on the fast attacks. Uh, teamwork is a lot like a great thing in here. Um, a new spell system. Um, uh, there's more player agency. It's 5e compatible. And what by that, they, uh, they kind of mean like... Um, compatible with like adventures and monsters so on the gm side it's more 5e compatible i don't see like somebody playing a fighter or whatever a class from this game together with somebody like playing a class from fifth edition because that wouldn't make sense that wouldn't like really make uh, a lot of sense uh, at least not for me at least not in my head maybe it does if you start playing it but it doesn't really do that so i talked about the attack attacks just hit Unless you roll a 1. All you do is you roll your damage die. You don't really roll a d20 for that. You roll your damage die. Your attack hits. Only if you roll a 1, it doesn't hit. But if you roll a max on your damage die, like a 6 on a d6, you do a exploding critical hit. Uh, so you can roll another... You can roll your die again and add that to the max amount, to the amount of damage you do. If that is, an, uh, is, that is like another... Uh, max roll like another six you can do that again and you can do that in, until eter eternity or until your lock runs out basically i really like that the first time i read that i wasn't sure about it but now i'm so convinced it's so good it's like yeah i attack that creature okay roll your damage uh what's your damage well, my damage is d8 you roll it's a four you deal four damage it's a 1, you miss. It's an 8, you roll again. Then another 8, you roll again. That's 16. Then it becomes a 4. That's 20 in total. You deal 20 damage. Plus, of course, your strength or whatever. Um... Uh, yeah, and it uses also an action point system, the typical three point action point system that you can use to attack, you can use to cast a spell, you can use to assess, and assess is like basically um, you need more information or an edge in combat, a hero can use an action to make a skill check to uncover information, spots, uh, spot a weakness or damage for an ability. Uh, in in intuit enemy tactics plans etc so that's an assess thing so you could be like you know what i use one um action point to assess and you assess and you know oh they're vulnerable to slashing damage and then you're like okay i use my second action point to uh slash with my weapon that deals slashing damage right so um and then i use my third action point to move uh which is three action points at the end of all of your turns you um of your turn you regain those action points it's always really important to say it's at the end of your turn because there's heroic reactions you could also when it's not your turn uh you can use your action points to um basically um do other stuff teamwork stuff for example interpose uh, if an ally within 10 feet of you would be struck with an attack you can push them out of the way and become the new target of the attack the, uh, you enter their square and move them to an adjacent square of your choice i really like that it's 10 feet that really like um normally these kinds of things is like five feet and i've always found like if they make it 10 feet there's much more team play there like somebody who plays um a frontline commander type dude lead by example type dude he needs to be able uh to like push one of their people away and just jump in front of that and 10 feet just makes much more sense for me uh when you are playing on a grid right um to me at least um also the initiative system is super simple um it's just basically heroes go first and then it's the monsters and you as an as um as a gm kind of decides who of the heroes goes first and i really like as a GM, it's like, okay, you are initiating the combat, you go first. And from there, it goes clockwise. And you as a GM can uh, choose if the monsters, let's say the four orcs and four players, if you want to go like player, orc, player, orc, player, orc, player, orc, player, orc, whatever. Or you want to go like player, 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 orc, right? So it's always a hero or the heroes that go first. Uh, uh, they talk about hit points, they talk about other stuff, they talk about like making a hero, all of that is also like super simplistic. Um, they talk about the uh, what the Berserker is and what they do. As a Berserker you can become uh, a raging damaging dealing machine, you can cr increase your damage to unbelievable levels and you use your savage arsenal and choose abilities to crush your foes and laugh in the face of death. Uh, love it. Um, also, I want to talk about the, I really like the um, exhaustion system. 
So out of combat, you roll d20, 20s for skill checks, right? And all, all, all other stuff, right? You want to seduce a dragon, roll a d20, plus your charisma or whatever it is. Um, you One level of exhaustion just means minus one on your d20 rolls. That's it. If you have six levels of exhaustion, you die. Um, you die, you dead, right? So, um, and you regain one level of exhaustion um, per long rest. So minus one on the d20, like the first level, mm, second level, mm, third level, fourth level, ah, right? Um, I, I like it. Simple, effective, does what it needs to do. Love it, love it, love it. Also the art. Have you fucking seen the art? Sorry. Have you seen the art? I mean, yeah. Uh, all of that. Yeah. There's more information here, here about the Berserker, about the Cheat, um, also about the Mage. So basically, right here, you have more than enough stuff to already start playing this thing. There's melee weapons, uh, 1d4, 1d4, 1d6, 1d8, 1d10, 1d12. So... Uh, a great sword uh, has a lower chance of missing, only 1 in 12, but it also has a lower chance in uh, critting. It's also 1 in 12. So yeah, I I like that. It's different, um, but I like it. Also, if you would be, um, it's really important to state, if you would be like dual wielding, um, like two daggers say, and you roll... Um, no, you have to like roll two damage die for like one attack. It is the far most left that the one that lands most on the left is your main die, and if it is a one on that, it is it becomes a miss, and if it's a four on that, it becomes a crit. Uh, I think that's just a really cool way of like, um, yeah, the one that lands on the left, right? They talk about races, they talk about all that stuff. There's more to it. I mean, yeah, of course. And this is the character sheet. Just look at this. There's normal class, intelligent, wisdom, charisma, um, strength, dex, intelligent, wisdom, charisma, um, uh, exhaustion. There is uh, just a few uh, skills, which is like uh, only like lore, might, nature, craft, perception, influence, and then there's just an empty sheet with your stuff that you can do. You just write that down there. I am really intrigued by this system. I have to say, I'm super interested in this, and I um, I genuinely want to play one or two sessions with a group just to test it this out. And I want to get like I want to do some like more deep dives into like the books themselves uh, because there's three books. Um, there's a book with adventures, there's a book with the heroes, and there is a book with like the rules themselves because there's more to it, of course. It's like preview stuff, right? Um, but I really want to dive deeper into this. This I I I see tons and tons and tons of RPG systems, and people keep sending me RPG systems and. Only a few click with me, but this one really, really clicks with me. So if you're interested in it, make sure to hit the link in the description below. And if not, just move to an to another video or whatever, or 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 just don't click the link in the description below. Until next video, bye bye.